What's up, YouTube friends? My name is Pi. Welcome to another episode of Constructive Critique. This time, our guest critique star, we have Charmy Pena of Charmy Petenia Photography. Now, Charmy is not only a good friend of mine, I mean, she's an ambassador to like literally everything. She's a, <laughs> a Nikon ambassador. She's a Magmod ambassador. She's an SLR Lounge educational ambassador. So thank you for being here, first of all. And she also has an upcoming flash workshop, which we're gonna jump into. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about it at the end, uh, as well as some of the other things that you're doing. So now we're gonna get into critiquing your guys' images. And we actually asked for y'all to submit your images to the SR Lounge Photography Education Group on Facebook. Be sure to join that. We have 11 images here. And for those of you at home, this is how it works. Charmy and I are gonna put up a rating for these images at the same time. We're gonna rate it between one and 10. It follows the SR Lounge rating system, which is a one is a really poopy shot. Very few images are gonna get this. There's nothing praiseworthy about that. A 10 is an image that's literally, nothing can be changed. It is gold star award winning world class. This thing is amazing. Very few images will get that as well. Cause there's always something to say. A five is essentially what a professional photographer should do in that scene. Nothing more, nothing less, and in between, well, we'll go from there. So Charmy, we got two minutes to critique each photograph, which means Ooh. if you're verbose like a certain Jay Casario, you're gonna be eating up most of that time and then I'll have nothing to say, but that's okay because people... Nobody wants to hear what you say anyway, it's fine. Damn it, that's exactly what Jay said too. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go two minutes. When we are ready to give a rating, we're gonna post that rating at the same time and give a number so we have a place to kind of start talking. You ready, girl? Are we just holding up fingers? Like, what's happening? Yeah, you can hold up fingers. I feel like I said <laughs> girl with a U. I did. Gr yeah, girl? Fine. Girl? That's like the way Carla would say it. I can't do it, because I'm a dad and I'm 40 years old. Okay. I mean, I feel like you shouldn't give away our age. What are you doing? I'm actually not 40. People just think I am. Yeah, so stop. Okay. Y'all ready? Yep. Let's do this. We got Andy Maldonado of Light Up Wedding Photography. Is that the image that you see too? I do. Okay. Think of a number, any number, not, not any number, Charmy. It's between one and 10. Like, <laughs> if you were listening earlier, you would know this. Yeah, I wasn't. You got a number? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got a number. Okay, on three, here we go. One. I, so I was gonna do this, but then I, yeah, okay. Copycat. Uh, this, 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 this. Ti I, timer's up. Go. go. The bed on the floor. The bed on the floor. Okay, there's the bed on the floor. You are right. <laughs> so I feel like when we're shooting, getting ready, stuff like this, we need to get all up in there if we have to get all up in there and cut all the noise. And a bed on the floor qualifies as noise. Mm, I like it. I mean, you still got. A, a solid 40 seconds to go. You, do you want to throw in anything else? Okay, she's just really pissed off about the bed, guys. Uh, I'm and, just pretty really mad about the bed, yeah. Andy, <laughs> just take the bed out of your shot and then you'd have like an award-winning image. I think that, I also think that like, if you if you had moved in, if, if he had moved in closer because you took, cut the bed out, it would automatically improve the composition. So I want to comp comment on the composition, but I feel like just keeping in mind all the extraneous garbage that is in your image can automatically bring you to a better place on that front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're really fixated on the bed. That's cool. I, got I really am. <laughs> okay. So, all right, my turn. I got a minute here. Uh, that was a nice job, by the way. Like you took exactly half your time. That's, that's great. You're, you're very friendly. You're a sharer of critique I, time. I try. Thank you. So, you know, a five, for me, you did most things right, Andy. Um, like, like I like the lighting, like the way that you're bouncing your flash, it looks good. All that stuff is good. But compositionally, Charmy's absolutely right. We see the beds on the left side. We also see the stack of books. We also see the purse down in the bottom of the right frame. We see a gift directly above it. There's just a lot of mess and there's also stuff on the bed as well. And the way that all of this could have been corrected is shifting slightly to the right. And that would have also allowed us to see this person who's magically fixing the veil with the, her hands, but we don't really see her face. I assume that's the mother and we probably wanna see her in the actual photographs. So shifting to the right and kind of tightening up the composition bit would have immediately taken this to a five or a six. The next thing is expressions for me. And then going above that is really framing and composition. So quickly, 
the framing composition, I would have wanted something a little bit more unique uh, versus just kind of a straight on shot of them getting ready. Something like more artistic and interesting to get above like a six or seven. All right, do you, do you I agree? I have a thing, a thing to say. Say your thing, girl. <laughs> um, I think that when, when, I think that when I did this kind of stuff where I was a little bit further away, it was because I was scared to getting closer mm. and like be, feel like I was interrupting the action. Don't like just work through that and don't worry about interrupting the action. Like nobody cares that you're there at that at this point where they're like getting her dressed, you you've been forgotten. And so don't like don't be afraid to just get in there and do what you gotta do. She's telling us that we've been forgotten. <laughs> that's that's what I got from that whole thing. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank nobody you. cares about you, Pie. Andy, great job. Let's go on to the next Oops. image. Chad ciphered uh why do you put Instagram? He's not Chad Seifert of Instagram. Chad Seifert of Chad Seifert Photography. Oh, oh, it's saying to check Instagram for his, okay, got it, got it, got it. All right, thank you for submitting this image, Chad. Charmy, you got a number? No, but I'm working on it. You're working on it? Take okay, me. I got a number. You got a number, okay. Um, okay, I got a number. Okay, ready? One. Two. <laughs> okay. I think you, I'm the nice one. You like your you like your fives. I like my fours. I, mean, I think that you. I think I think you have to. Mm, okay, fine. Yeah, I'm sticking to five right now. Yeah, stick with your gun. I like. The, I, I like that they tried for. Um, I like that the maker tried for, like balance, and that they are going somewhere with composition. It's not completely arbitrary. Stuck a woman in every window. Um, now, now I remember, feel like I just... this subject of today's critique is wedding photojournalism. Right. So I'm going there. You're getting okay. I, I didn't want to like. You know how we I missed the whole wedding thing earlier. My thunder. Oh god. Thunder stolen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I like the effort that was put into like planning it a little bit, but I can't imagine a situation in which this is an organic moment. And so I just can't imagine that the poor bridesmaids have to be happen to be in like different windows and like peeking down while the couple is looking. Like I don't know why they're outside or what they're doing outside or why the bridesmaids are in the window. So it's it's hard for me to imagine this as an organic moment. Yeah, that's probably my main critique too. Um, boy, that girl on the right side is really like getting all into it. She's all the way out the window. She's <laughs> she's ready to go. Uh, so. That that's honestly my main thing is that I, I get that this is a wedding. I just don't see the purpose in the shot, nor do I think it's kind of a, a photojournalistic shot. From a, a kind of compositional standpoint, I'd say that the lighting itself and the coloring and the post is not very interesting. We just have a bunch of brown tones in the shot, uh, which to me lends itself more to a black and white. Um, but yeah, it doesn't strike me as photojournalistic. Unless they're listening to a speech by each of these four girls who happen to be speaking from the rooftop. <laughs> okay, if that During really reception. happens, I would shoot it just slightly differently still. Okay, all right. All right, thanks, Chad, for submitting anyway. Let's go ahead and move to the next image. By the way, Chad, keep submitting. Just just keep submitting. It's, it's a good shot. Just not a journalistic shot. All right, David Alonzo of David Photo Studio. Let's go ahead. So, uh, full disclosure... Uh, David has worked for me in the past. What is going on? Okay, so Jay snuck in one of his own images. I, I didn't sneak anything. They were colluding before, <laughs> and they were like, we're just gonna sneak in our own portraits into this. Oh, okay, I didn't do that. None of mine are in here. All right, so you're saying that David worked, okay. Well, technically David, it was one of Jay's a, shooters. Is, I, I have no idea when he took this. I'm just saying he has assisted me in the past. Okay, I, I think conflict of interest aside, I think she, she can still critique this one, right? I think so. Carlo's giving you this much room right now. I'm just, I'm just like, I feel like the full disclosure kind of takes care of the whole bias. You know? I, I appreciate that. Okay, number. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if it takes care of your bias when we give it a number. <laughs> um, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready too. Okay, ready? Yep. One. Oh, that is you. Mean. Six. Wait, did you give it a seven? I didn't see. I gave, I gave it a seven. Oh, that's the that's like the Asian way of like doing seven. This is Wait, like. What, what did you do? I did the the peace sign with the five. <laughs> oh no no. 
I'm Asian. What are you doing? I know, <laughs> but like the right way to do seven. And you count on your fingers. You go one, two, three, four, I mean, five, six, seven. It's, it's arguable what's right. Let's let's not be <laughs> let's not be racist about this, okay? I mean, my way is the right way. The end. Um, <laughs> All right. So, so actually, I I thought this was funny, and I think it's well framed, um, and I like the black and white toning. I did for a moment though have a heart attack and think that his hand was being ironed. Yeah, that um, kind of looks like it. Yep. So, Tweaking, tweaking, maybe the angle may have helped me have less of a heart attack about his hand being ironed. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's fired too. She's fired from this completely voluntary critique. Okay, so I, I, I agree with you. Like. From my standpoint, uh, like a typical professional photographer would have kind of walked up to this and kind of just taken that straight on shot. I love the angle. That's like a huge plus one for me is going over his shoulder and getting that angle. The next thing is is what we did in post to kind of like, you know, darken down the image to make it black and white. The way that, you know, the steam is kind of being backlit. That's all another big plus one for me. Honestly, the only thing that prevents this from kind of stepping up further in the notches is a sense of story and context. like. I, I love that, like this could be a groom, it could be the groomsman, it could be a whole bunch of different things. And I kind of wish we saw a little bit more of the scene and a little bit more was happening here um, to kind of lend more meaning to the image and more of a story behind this journalistic moment. But as is, I think we have a, a seven, a solid seven, possibly even an eight here as far as a great detail shot. Um, so well done. You train your assistants and second shooters well, Charmy. Okay, we even had 30 seconds this left. Look at this. David, this had nothing to do with me, but I will totally take credit. You're yeah, welcome, David. Take, take credit for other people's work. I do it all the time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't do that, okay? <laughs> I don't. I don't do that. I promise. I, I'm very specific to credit people when I steal their ideas. I mean, as are we all, right? Yeah. 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 When I, see, I steal Susan Stripling's ideas all the time, I just give her credit and then call it a day. Everybody steals her ideas. Let's be honest. <laughs> okay. Poor girl. So it's a sign of flattery. Yeah, I'm just saying I give her credit, so it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, this is by Gregory Hitchcock of Gregory Hitchcock Photography. This is a nice journalistic moment for sure. Look yeah. at look at this dude in the back. He's He's got something to say right now. He just, well. Okay. So numbers. All right. You got it? Yep. Ready? One, two, three. See, I'm I'm nicer than you are. Once, one whole time. Okay, I'm a, I'm gonna go quick so that you can verbally bash the shiz out of this because I know that's what you like to do. Yeah, um, me. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I like the image overall. Um, for I'm not a huge fan of Dutch angle, but in this one instance, I feel like you know it kind of works for like this. You know, the reason why it kind of works is because they have a nice. Uh, sort of candid expression as a candid moment. So having that Dutch angle kind of lends itself to, oh, this was just in the moment, you know, not perfected type image, and it kind of lends itself to that. Uh, the main thing that I'm giving you a plus one for is that you set up a rim light, um, which gives a nice focus on the couple. You also added a really nice emphasizing main light onto them, which really chiseled them out of the scene. And I think that's a great step beyond what the typical professional photographer might do in this shot. Um, the main reasons I'm not going above that is I think while the expression's good, I would have loved to see a better one um, with her eyes kind of more open, looking towards him, shooting more through this scene and getting a little bit of motion in addition to adding a more interesting compositional element with some foreground, with some other things in the shot that could have like kind of lent itself to more than just a bullseye composition. Plus, I forgot to start the timer, so that was basically a minute. Now you got a minute. Go. Okay. So I went with five because I think... Uh, you know, the maker's clients are probably super, super happy because they look happy here. They look in love. But when it comes to uh, critique for a PJ image, uh, and it's possible I'm being a little harder because I see the potential. But I think that I think that when you're having when you're shooting something like this, every face in the frame sort of matters. And if they're not contributing, they're kind of taking away from it. Yeah. And so we have so many faces that really aren't interested and aren't really doing anything whereas you know i see this guy in the back who's really entertaining and if it was gonna be pj and we were gonna let other people be in it this guy right then, here yep 
Yeah. yeah. If we were going to let other people be in it, then every face in it needs to be contributing, whether it's funny or happy or whatever. So, so like this guy on the left that's drinking his bottle, um, I, I don't care about him, so he doesn't need to be there, I think. You hear that? You hear that? That's your wrap it up. What? I'm not done. Um, <laughs> okay, no, along those lines, though, real quick, what, because I love that critique, and I think you're 100% absolutely correct that, you know, a, a kind of award-winning PJ image, every person's face and expression lends value and meaning to what's happening in the photograph. But what can you do in this scene where there's just a lot of people that don't seem like they're into it? I mean, it's un, it's, it, the situation's unpredictable, right? But at the same time, you, you have a context of what's happening around you. And so I think when I have this many people around who aren't giving me what I need, I will observe for sure. But sometimes you just can't get the wide shot you want to get. Sometimes it's meant for a tight shot because the people in the scene are not giving you what you need. And and from a couple, you know, from the couple's perspective too, a tight shot here would give them the love between them and the fun they're having together. And the wide shot gives them, yes, there were people there, but these people are, some of them are interested, but a lot of them are not. So if you can't reduce down to the interested people, then just forget the people. Yeah. No, I, I love that. And I think, like you said, the clients are going to love this photograph. It just might not be one that kind of wins awards because of what's right. happening in the background. So yes. it, it should be shot. And Greg, you did a great job shooting it. Um, I'd make one tiny note that the overall image, there's a lot of brown and again, a lot of warmth in the shot. So maybe kind of a little bit more neutral, but um, great. I love it. It's very unique and interesting critique by the Charmy Patel Pena. I try. You know. Okay. Here we have Jason Angelini of Jason Angelini Photography with this wedding PJ moment. You got a number? Got a number. I got a number. Okay. Three, Ready? two. Do you see how I hid my thumb and then I like revealed it last second? <laughs> You're like, is it safe? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think he got. I, I think he got the moment here. He just didn't frame it properly. Yeah, I, I would agree 100. percent In fact, let's put up the timer and you go first. I think along the same lines of what I said for the previous image, that the father and child and even the guy in the hat in the back are not contributing anything. They're just mm -hmm. distracting. And I think all, I mean, this comes down to composition in general. When you have distracting elements, whether it's an uninterested human being or a garbage can, you just want to find a way to get them out. Well, so and, I, I, I'm, I'm cropping it down on my side so they can see what you're talking about. And yeah. I'm basically cropping out the people on the left. And if you just move yeah. your camera angle to the left more so that you can see the, the woman's face, the baby and excited grandpa, then yeah. you have really a, a much better image here. And, and it's more emotional because no random faces that don't care yep. are a part of it. Yep. So I'd agree 100% with that. I think from a black and white perspective, in terms of like the way it's post-processed, it's a little bit, uh, I, I'd love for it to be a little more poppy. Um, but the only other thing to me is that the baby looks kind of bored. <laughs> so even if you did see, <laughs> even if you did see the baby's face, uh, that would still be the last piece that kind of like, I don't know if that would put it together, but that would definitely give you a much, much better photograph. Um, you got anything else for this one? Nope. Okay. Tell grandpa to uh, drop grandpa's cough medicine, by the way. He's got it down there at the bottom of the frame. Nobody needs what? to see that. We're in, a, we're in a church, people. Don't need, we don't need to be drinking in church. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Maybe it was seltzer water. Yeah, you don't know. Who knows? Okay. Dude, we're, we're rocking the time right now. We're, we're good. Okay. This is Jason Vincent's photograph from Vincent Images. Jason is another incredible photographer out there. Be sure to check him out as well. We're actually going to be featuring him on another episode coming up. So... In the meanwhile. I don't know. Is he going to come back after we say mean thing? He's not going to see this before he goes live. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got a number? I do. I got a number. I have a feeling we're going to fight about this. Ready? Mm, three, two. All right. We're not fighting like, I mean, I do want to fight, so let's fight. <laughs> All right. Fight. Can I go first? Yeah, I'm you'll, giving it an eight. You'll actually let me go first, okay. You're welcome. <laughs> so, 
My, like, honestly, for me, the composition is fantastic. I love the kiss of light that Jason dropped onto the subject in the shot. Um, I, I, I like everything that's going on about this. And, the, and for that reason, you know, it's, to me, the composition plus the lighting, plus the way it's processed, those are all my plus twos that get it up to a seven. Where I'm dropping it significantly in points is kind of like the overall story of what's happening because we have no context for this image. And given that this is a, a wedding photojournalism competition, we don't necessarily know that it is a wedding other than the fact that it's taking place at a Christian church. That's really the only kind of tie that we have to the overall story that's going on. Now, on my side, I think that what would make this a crazy award-winning shot is seeing this girl climbing right here and having a vantage point where if you saw the wedding actually going on inside of the image or inside that chapel area, and then you saw this girl, you know, on top, like climbing and doing her own thing, that to me would be like, I would give it nine or 10 for that case. But that, uh, that's my main drawback. I don't like admitting when you're right. You know what? <laughs> I get that a lot because I'm usually right. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, just ask I'm my girlfriend. No, just, think of please. reasons wrong. Don't ask um, my girlfriend. I think don't, don't from a that. toning perspective, I would have liked to see the sky at the bottom match the color of the sky at the top. Does that make you know what oh, I'm yeah. saying? I didn't even notice that, actually. You're totally right. It's a little bit lighter. Um, but, but until you reminded me that this is a wedding photojournalism category, I love, I just, I, it feels like she was really up there just climbing around, having a good time. Let's, and let's like, be it's honest. Been, you, you said it was a 10. I said it was an eight. I'll okay. give you a seven. Okay. Fine. Okay. Fine. I think you did say eight. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't tell Jason. Don't tell Jason. Jason, if you're watching this before your episode, I'm sorry? <laughs> are you, though? No, not really. I don't, I don't think are. you are either. Are you sorry? No, it is a really great image, and thank you for submitting, Jason. Uh, can't wait to have you on the show. Okay. Josh Hartwig of Organic Moments Photography. J. Why do I keep, I keep, that's not part of his studio name. But you keep saying it. I keep saying it. Yeah. I'm Ron Burgundy? It's the, <laughs> you put the words there, I'm, I'm just going to read it out. Are you, are you new here? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, my first time around. Okay. <laughs> do you got a number? I do. Ready? Yep. And go. Mm. <clears throat> so I actually had a hard time giving it six, too. So you would, mm, I'll go first. <laughs> so I have been judging a lot of competitions this year. And the thing, the single thing I find most frustrating about any category is dead center without purpose. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is dead center without purpose. Now tell me why you feel like it's without purpose. I, I, the floor's not doing anything for me. The ceiling's not doing anything for me. Maybe that more of the ceiling would do something. There seem to be chandeliers up there. Um, the floor is mostly darkened. And it's not giving me anything that gives me more of the scene. And I don't see their faces. And so I like feel this moment. I actually do. And so I like that. But... I I think that the clients are really, really, probably really happy and feel feel like this is one of their favorite images because it seems it, like if you were one of the people in this photo, then it means a lot to you. But I think that when you take something to a critique or a competition place, it has to resonate with people who weren't in the photo. Mm -hmm. And I think that I think that that's missing because I don't have either of their faces. And the composition is so bleh. She just is like, keeps going. I took your whole two minutes. Thanks for leaving me 30 seconds. It's cool. Okay, let's go. Let's move on to the next one. Cool. What? What? <laughs> no. Isn't that nice? Okay. You need a turn? I'll, I'll take my 30 seconds to say that you're 100% you're, you're right. Um, I kind of disagree with like, well, I think that, the composition is nice. I just don't see it like it's supposed to be a symmetrical composition, but it's not. That's that's my issue is that like the lines that are leading in are not quite leading in, you know, the chandeliers aren't directly above. Like, so to me, I see it more as like an off centered composition that's trying to be symmetrical and it's not. The other thing to me is that, and, and I'm gonna take just like 10 more seconds to say that 
In addition to what you've said, the main thing for me that kind of holds it back is that I don't see like faces and expressions on the primary subjects in the shot. And so uh, to me, I would have loved to see that moment where there's kind of like both, you see their profiles and you see how into the moment they are. Um, but I, I like the shot, I like the processing. I think the processing, the shot, the lighting, those are the reasons that I gave it a seven as opposed to anything less. And I think for the same reasons that you didn't give it anything you know, more than, you actually gave it an eight, didn't you? Give it a six, calm oh, down. six. <laughs> wow. You're feisty today in your pajamas. I'm surprised this is different than normal. Wait, this is good. You didn't, you didn't, despite, you, she didn't say anything about the pajamas. I said, you're feisty in your pajamas. She didn't say that they're not pajamas. This is not. It's a sweatshirt from Nordstrom. It's a sweatshirt from Nordstrom. It, they look like pajamas, dude. It's really soft, too. It looks comfy, I'll be honest. Okay. Uh, great job, by the way, Josh Hartgrave. I really like the image. I think your clients will, too, just like uh, Charmy said. Uh, Kai. Isoline of Kai Isoline Photography. Probably slaughtered your name too. Uh, okay. You got a number? Um, yes. Okay. Three, two. Okay. I'm going to go first because you're just too nice. Okay. <laughs> two minute timer's up. So Kai, my main thing here is that it's a, it's a really great moment that was captured and I'm sure they're gonna appreciate this, but from a standpoint of like what was achieved here, the direct flash is not doing any favors. Um, I don't like the flat lighting on them and that direct flash look. We're also punched in so close that we really don't see the environment and anything that's going on around them and we lose that sense of story. Uh, we only get the context from basically knowing that they are dressed like a bride and groom and he has something, it looks like his her corset on his head, which I guess... Garter, garter. It's called a garter. You know what? I think it's a corset. Okay? I don't think you know where those go then. Cor corset's <laughs> on your waist. You're correct. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got the garter on his head, and um, yeah, I'm just not in love with... like I, This isn't a moment to me that I would punch in super close on. You know, it's not like... like I don't necessarily know if I want to see them kissing that way, this tight, with direct flash showing every detail on their face. <laughs> I would rather see this kind of wider and see more context for where we are and some interesting framing elements that kind of show a sense of story to the image. Uh, that's my main critique. Well, I stole my critique, but... Um, is it say, so, it's because I'm right, isn't it? Just say it. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> when I first saw the image, it actually took me a minute to like realize what was happening because it felt a little bit snapshotty. Yeah. And... So I, I, got, I had to get it a little close to just analyze it a little bit. And then I noticed the thing on his head. And so to agree with... Did I, you see the way she rolled her eyes right there? <laughs> uh, to agree, I would say if you had pulled back, uh, we would, probably would have understood more of what's happening. And I think it looks like, and, and maybe I'm off base, but it looks like you were outside and you had a night sky, like a sunset and... It seems like we're not taking advantage of like letting that be a part of the context of all this, all that was happening. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Look at us. So that, timely. That, that was very difficult to admit that I was right. Wasn't it? That was difficult for you. It hurts every time. Okay. That's, that's a, that's harsh. <laughs> it's okay. Though. Um, Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm going to save it for the critique. Save I the love critique. this, but <laughs> I love this butt. <laughs> we'll get there. They're so sweet. Kay. Why are they hugging? They're so cute. <laughs> Why are they okay. hugging? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready? Uh, hold on. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. One, two, three. Eight. I'm going. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, I, I have serious critique for this, but I have to give them extra credit for paying attention and being at this weird angle enough to get this. Like, like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like they were they must have been preparing to be ready for this hug B to be at this angle. BTW. <laughs> I totally forgot to mention that this is Linda Wells of Linda Wells Photography submitting this. So thank you, Linda, for submitting. Oh. She's she's an amazing photographer, by the way. I know that. Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, to be prepared, like, to be here, 
which is not where your average photographer would be. And to see that coming enough to like, you know, get it while the rings are in his hand, I, I feel like this is good Laird. The only thing that's killing me is that stupid fire hydrant. That's the only thing? <laughs> no, the fire hydrant, and I would love to see it toned a little bit differently because I think the toning is a little bit flat, and so your eye doesn't go straight to the kids, and I want it to go straight to the kids. Yeah, okay, so I, I agree with all those points. There's a couple other things for me, though, that like kind of, now, knowing Linda, because here's what I was about to say. Now, I know who shot this photograph, and therefore I don't think that this is what it is, but when I first saw it, I kind of went, where are all the people in the pews over here? <laughs> it feels like this was almost a staged moment. Where, yeah, she wasn't. Because like we have them and like it, it's almost like one of those shots that could have been taken just after the ceremony and like, oh, I want to win a award type, you know, shot. So I'm going to get them to hug and do this kind of thing. I would have loved to see now knowing Linda, I don't think it was that case because yeah, Linda is very it. much a photojournalist. Um, but I would have loved to see people over there. I don't know if there's anything you could do about that. If just nobody happens to sit in that place. Well, she works at a destination. And so it's entirely possible they were eloping with their kids. That makes 100% more sense. She lives in the Bahamas. She shoots, uh, you know, people who are getting married in the Bahamas with their kids. You nailed it. Now stop talking because my time's up. <laughs> Damn it. Just kidding. So so you're 100% you're right about that. And so my solution to this, to make this like award winning, would have been to step off the, if, if we're using a 2470, it would have been to zoom in a little bit and basically show him in the left side of the frame, compress the image just a little bit more so that she's right next to them and they frame out the, uh, the pews right here. And then we see the other person on the right side. So it's stepping back and basically zooming in just a little bit more so that it frames out the pews and we have a better focus on kind of what's happening in the background while still not losing context of the foreground. Again, like you said, removing the fire hydrant in post would be a nice thing. And also the toning is something I agree with because with everything so bright, I don't know that my eyes are being drawn in. I think this photograph is almost one that would lend itself really better to a black and white and then darkening and kind of bringing that radial filter in to kind of like pull our attention right into the kids. And Charmy's doing sign language. They're not I'm cropping with my fingers. <laughs> I'm like, do you got like your binoculars on? Like, you know, most people when they like do the whole framing thing, they do this, you know, like, like they're not like this. Like, no, well, <laughs> that's because I think actually in the weirdest way possible, look, I'm not, I'm, I'm a person who tends to only, I crop with my feet, so I don't really crop in post in general at all. I like that, uh, that saying, crop with your feet. Yeah, but if I crop in post, I tend to stick to the original ratios. But here, I kind of don't care about any of the grown-ups' faces. And so I was looking at it like, if I just cut all the grown-ups' faces out and had it be like a long panorama almost, like, do I like it? And I kind of do. Well, let me, let me, let, let me show you something. <laughs> Hold on. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to punch this in because with the rings and this piece of paper, you yeah. would actually have an entirely perfect context for what's going on yeah, if you punched in directly to their faces right there. So they, they can see that on my side right now, but that would be another cool <laughs> shot. Again, the fire hydrant would need to go, but you'd have a perfect sense of context for what where this is and what's happening. Um, but this this is one of those images that very much could be a fearless image. It could be a, a, an apex image on SR Lounge uh, with a couple tweaks to it. So that's really cool. So Linda, great job. We spent, we, was that favoritism? We spent like a minute, th like three minutes on her shot. That might have been favoritism. Let's because we, we love her. <laughs> and we don't, the rest of you. I'm just kidding. That's so mean. Why would, <laughs> why would you say that, Charmy? That's messed up. Oh my goodness. Orlando Suarez, Viridian Images, Photography, dot com. I don't know if it's actually a dot com. I just felt like I needed to add that. You got a number? I, I got, got a number. number. I got a number. Ready? Hold on, hold what? on, hold on, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, okay. Let me just think for one second. Are you analyzing? Okay. I'm analyzing, I'm analyzing. Okay, I'm ready. Ready? One, two, three. <gasps> You're getting it at 10! This you is my, it. this is my first oh, ever 10 on yeah. constructive critique. Okay, I don't actually have any critique, so maybe I should have What the it fudge? <laughs> I Orlando, send her a message about that. this image is contributing to this image. Yeah. Yeah. And like the movement's actually a big plus. It's not a blur. It's movement. Yeah. It's great. So 
there's so many things going right about this to me is a as a burning is really great as a wedding PJ moment like you are you're in the action so number one you chose the right lens and you chose the right position you're in the action where it's happening number two every face like Charmy said is contributing to the overall story that's going on number three you selected a shutter speed that would show just enough motion but not so much that faces are blurry and this adds so much value to the interest of the image because it makes it look like it's in action on top of the focal length, on top of being close. Number four, you killed it making it black and white and on top of that you dodged and burned to bring our attention into her face which is where most of the action is happening. You nailed this from start to finish on this image and if this were a part of our award submissions it would be an apex image. So maybe it will be next month. I, I love it. Uh, I take back my eight. Ha! Do you hear that? Say the Shut words, up. Charmy. Say the words. It's because of Orlando, not you. You're supposed to say you're right. No, I, I it's because of Orlando. Never, Orlando did a good job. You did nothing. I never get that. You're just like Shiv. Why you always got to cut me down? <laughs> you, you just showed up for work. Like, that's it. I'm actually but, wearing sweatpants right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm wearing sweatpants too. I admit that. But at least your shirt's from Nordstrom's. It just doesn't look like it is. It's from Nordstrom's. <laughs> it just doesn't look like it is. It's fine, though. Okay, so congratulations to Orlando for the first ever 10, and a reluctant 10 from Charmy Pena as well. It's not a reluctant 10. I yep. just, you know, I don't give 10. I, I don't give 10. <laughs> just kidding. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Tanya Parada of Parada Studio. I keep wanting to say .jpg. Okay. <laughs> so, you got a number? No. <laughs> Hold on. I need a second. Okay. Uh, yeah. I got a number. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're a six and I'm a seven. I'm going to go quick. Yeah. Super unique angle. Like this is the, my main reason that you're getting a plus one is the angle is so unique and the way that one leg is going out and one leg is going the other way, it creates a composition that's very visually interesting to look at to try and figure out what exactly is happening in this scene. On top of that, I normally wouldn't like necessarily like the color in this scene because of the brown carpet, but the way that the blues contrast, again, it kind of just holds you and locks you into the shot. So you get a big plus two for me. You get a giant minus three in terms of, I have no context for what's happening here, uh, other than the fact that we have two people that are really dressed up nicely, uh, and this is a nice PJ moment. I, I love that about it. But as far as wedding photojournalism, I'm missing the wedding storytelling side of this, or something else that would kind of pull me in and say, oh, as a person that was not there, I know exactly what's going on, and wow, this is an incredible moment. So I'm kind of okay not having additional wedding context, um, because I just assume, that if she submitted it to the wedding PJ category and that he's like some level of a junior groomsman or ring bearer or something, doesn't matter. You, you're um, assuming now. My number came from composition. So okay. I actually think it's a great moment, though. Um, it's worth, th not just for Tanya, who is a great photographer, um, but for other people, too, to think about how when we see something, when we see a moment, sometimes we're like, oh, it's there, and we shoot it, and then we walk away. And I wonder if, like, if she had the opportunity to work this a little bit more, if the kid would have given her something else. Um, but also, I like the overhead angle, but I wish that it was... I, I, I want Tanya to be safe and not die, because I like her very much. <laughs> <laughs> but if there was a possibility of getting like a direct head on instead of kind of at an angle, you see how the carpet yeah, kind of goes that, this way. That would be very cool if you can go like right from the center, one yeah. leg up, one leg down, if it were possible. But again, I very much enjoy Tanya, don't want her to die. And so some things are just not possible. Um, but I think that like the angle sort of takes away from, he kind of looks like he's sliding off the can. Thing. Yeah. I, I do agree with you that like it, it's not necessarily that we need like tons of other stuff in the image, but we do need the the kid on the left to be doing something that gives it more. For me, it's giving it more context that this is a wedding. Yeah. Like for example, if he was just like oddly staring into the bridal bouquet because he was like playing with it or something, you know, <laughs> that would be like to me enough to say, okay, now I know what this is and where this is. 
it would be one of those kind of moments. But right now, I, I, I lack that context, too. So, all right. Dude, that is it. All right. Well, you, you crushed it. Well, thanks. Literally, you crushed it. <laughs> I don't know what that means, actually. It doesn't sound well, flattering, but you did a great job. Thanks for being my partner in crime. Fist bump. That was, hey, that, that kind of like works. Hey, I want to do that from now on. That's, that's great. So. Uh, way to give away our moments, Pi. It's cool. It's fine. Do whatever. It's not giving it away. It's sharing it with the world. Like I do all of my <laughs> photography secrets. Sounds great. For which nobody credits us back for doing it. It's fine. It's not like it hurts my feelings or anything. It's cool. Okay. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I want to thank Charmy for joining us. She's an incredible photographer. Be sure to follow her on Instagram at Charmy Pena Photography, right? I always want to say no, Patel. It's Charmy Pena. It is Charmy Pena. But your my, my legal name is Charmy Patel Pena. It's what I use in my personal life, but so my business is Charmy Pena. Don't don't use her personal name, use her business name. Okay? Yeah. So be sure to follow her. You also have a flash workshop that's going to be coming out. I do. I'm working on a off-camera flash workshop. I'm going to have one version for women only, and then I'll have a co-ed version a week later. Um, you can also catch me at Adorama in June. They're having a big, in New York, they're having a big wedding event. And so I will likely be there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to check out those links. We're going to include all the links to Charmy's work as well as their upcoming workshops. So you guys can stay tuned. Thanks for watching guys. Let us know who you guys would like to see in the next episode of Constructive Critique. My name is Pi. That was Charmy. We'll see you guys in the next episode.